um, now talking a little bit about your life outside of your day job, <laughs> um, sure. of which uh, I, I admire so much greatly, um, just how multifaceted you are in your life in music. Um, so you have quite a following on your various social media accounts. Uh, you're on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And like I mentioned before, you've uh, garnered over 35 million. It's probably more now, but on your bio, it said 35 million views. <laughs> um and so can you talk a little bit about how, um, like your origin story of how you came to start your passion um, expressing music through this medium and how also do you come up with these different ideas, especially for the videos that are more focused on entertainment? Sure, sure. <laughs> um, in terms of my origin story, uh, I think I have to go back to like those conducting days when I was two or three and something that's unique about, I guess, our generation is that we grew up with technology really making rapid change yeah. in our lives. Like kind of unheard of, you know, you know, maybe the generation before us, it was recordings that really revolutionized classical music, being able to hear, you know, go to the library and mm. pick out a favorite recording and then, and then our generation is the introduction of video mm -hmm. along with that recording. And I think experiencing that created a perfect storm of, 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 of experiencing classical music in this very unique way of not only admiring sound, but also kind of the artistry of what a person is physically doing in order to create that sound. Yeah. And so you know, our generation growing up now, we have the internet, which is really cool. I yeah. Think. Um, and uh, my journey with social media initially started simply with posting some old concert footage. Like, you know, growing up, my parents would video some random things that I would do, and I, sure. think I just posted some of, of that stuff. And, uh, that was fine, but it wasn't until the realization that I myself, as the artist, could create those mm -hmm. videos with, you know, either a combination of, you know, my very first movie editor, I'm mm -hmm. on the Mac. <laughs> Loved. It was like, <laughs> wow, I, I can, wow, look at all these cool things. I can film this and then I, it's on here. And it's, yeah, right. it, it was really cool. And, I remember in youth orchestra, I teamed up with a good friend of mine, Alex Fager, and we created this Super Mario Brothers duet for cello and violin. And one could argue that was my first foray into classical and pop coming together. Mm -hmm. And it did really well, and it was fun. And all of a sudden, this whole new door opened up to me where... I didn't necessarily have to play the music that my teachers wanted me to play. <laughs> <laughs> and that was awesome mm -hmm. and freeing and exciting and allowed me to, in a way, connect with my peers in a different way. You know, right. you can tell them you're playing Squire Tarantella and they're like, oh. <laughs> or you can tell them, you know, check out Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Whoa, this is super cool. Yeah. And I think that really lit a fire in me. And um, so I became very interested in movie editing. And mm -hmm. so in high school, I took a little film course. And then mm -hmm. in college, I did took a little audio editing course and mm -hmm. just continuously posting. And yeah. um, in college, I... Uh, was part of this really fun cello ensemble where I kind of five person cello ensemble called string theory, where oh. we created our own arrangements of pop music and mm. played it on the cello. And that was super fun and allowed us to connect with our, 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 our colleagues and friends on campus and mm -hmm. play concerts mm -hmm. at Columbia that were super, honestly, some of my favorite moments of my career. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, where am I going with this? I guess. Uh, oh, yeah. So the on the question of the more entertaining bits of content, um, 
I think it comes from a, a, um, a deep-seated uh, uh, feeling that I want to explain what all of this is about mm. to anybody. Yeah. Um, I feel if we can connect with people either through humor or education or just an overall feeling of positivity about what we do in classical music, then that's a big win for all of us. Yeah. And so, oh, what the thumb? <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, and so uh, that's where some of my more entertaining com uh, content comes from. Mm. And, uh, you know, they're incredible content creators that are focused on this, of course. Two set violin is my yeah. baby. <laughs> and they really connected with musicians all over. And there's a universality of, of relating to, I think, growing up and learning music and some of the strange things that we all accept to be true, but maybe aren't necessarily <laughs> should be true. Yeah. And uh, questioning the, the status quo. And that's what I like about Two Set is mm. that, yes, they're funny, but they're also challenging the status quo. Yeah. And I think that's something that I relate to, especially um, uh, as well. So yeah. I guess that's sort of my origin story. And I, you know, I've had, you know, ups and downs with content creation as well, I guess, uh, as a shortened version during the pandemic. I kind of went from this stage where, oh, I can finally create as much as I ever wanted. And then I finally, then it kind of burned me out a little bit. Mm. I was like, oh, I only want to create what I really want to create. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, I need to take a break from this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. only in the past couple of years have I started easing my way back into content creation. Because yeah. I think it can also be dangerous. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, everything in moderation, I think. Right. Well, and I love your passion for wanting to make music and cello more accessible to the greater audience, because I think one of our greatest heroes as cellists, Yo-Yo Ma, was really kind of the greatest torch bearer in that regard, because, I mean, obviously he he came up before social media, but even then, like he was going on shows like Arthur and Sesame Street and all these children's shows. And he, he just, he welcomed a whole new audience of, of people to music that otherwise might not have had an opportunity to even know what a cello is. So, I mean, I think that's a really beautiful thing, what you're doing with social media, because I, I again, I mean, with you know all the talk about you know well like what's the point of going to an orchestra concert or like the downhill of classical music i think as musicians it's not just our jobs to perform at the highest level anymore it's to really um create value and to show it's the value and the beauty of music to as many people as possible so yeah well, thank you for doing these podcasts. You're doing your part too. Don't forget that. <laughs> no, I just, I, I love talking to people and I, I love um, just the interpersonality, uh, person, interpersonal aspects of, of these discussions. So I always feel like I'm learning. So thank you for taking part. So, 